Hello, in this video I want to show how we can measure worst case execution time. Now, what is worst case execution time? Well, basically it's trying to work out the maximum length of time that a task can take to execute. And this is particularly important when you have a, a multi-core device, because what you'll find is all these cores are sharing effectively cache, they're also sharing memory, and they're also sharing some peripherals, and so we're going to get interference between these cores. And with that interference, we're going to find that the worst case execution time is going to increase. If you want more information about worst case execution time, then just go to the Eldria website and do a search for WCET, and you'll find lots of useful information about that. So in order to try this out, I've got some source code that I've obtained here. It's a function called blur. And blur is going to take basically an input file and it's going to blur it and save it as an output file. So here's an example of an input file. So this is a bitmap image that I'm going to pass to this function. And it's then basically going to create a blurred version of that. And I'd like to find out, well, how much time is this going to take to execute? Of course, I'm going to need some hardware to do this. And NXP have very kindly given me this gold box, which is an NS32G device. And that has a number of Cortex A53s, as well as a number of Cortex M7s. So a lot of multi-cores. And I'm running Linux on this. And as we can see, I've booted this. And I can see I have here the file that I want to, to test, as well as the, the image. Now, what I first want to do is I want to take a look at this source code and see, well, is it good quality? So I want to basically do a code review. Let's go and see, is this code compliant to a standard like MISRA C 2012? Well, as we can see, we've got quite a few violations here. Let's take a look at this one. File pointer not closed on exit, F out. Well, let's take a look and see where that occurs. So I can see on line 13, yes, We've initialized F out. And if I scroll down, I can see that in this particular case, if F in is equal to null, then we exit. And indeed, we don't actually close that. So that's something that would be very easy to, to fix. OK, what about the, the quality of this code? Well, at the same time, we can measure a number of metrics on the code. In this particular case, I want to take a look at the metrics that give me an idea of maintainability. I want to measure the cyclomatic complexity. What does that mean? Well, let's take a look at main. That's got a cyclomatic complexity of two. What does two mean? Well, it means it basically means there's two paths through that code. So you can very see very clearly one path and a second path. Blur has a value of nine. So it's a little bit more complex and we can see all the various paths through that code. So let's go and test this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch here to TB run and TB run is a unit testing tool. And I've created a, a test case for this function blur, where I'm passing as an input. Well, first of all, I'm going to pass a uh, file that doesn't exist, and I'm going to expect it to generate this output here. And since it, it's not going to have the input, it should return zero. So let's go and run that and check that it works. So that's now generated the program. It's going to perform the, the build. It's now executing it on the target. I've got the results back and we can see the test has, has passed. So it's passed, the output I was expecting zero, and I got zero. At the same time, we should be able to take a look at the coverage, and we've obtained coverage. Well, let's take a closer look at that on a flow diagram, and we've got 8% statement coverage, and basically we've taken this path through the code here. Basically, we've detected the fact that the pointer is, it doesn't exist, and so we've printed out file does not exist. So that's part of the test. I now basically want to test this part here. So let's go and run a second test. So this one was suspended. I'm now going to unsuspend it. And in this test case, I'm going to pass our uh, input and I'm going to expect to generate this particular output. And then in order to verify that it has worked correctly, I'm going to compare the generated uh, bitmap file with a, a reference one that I've saved. I'm expecting this to pass and I should get an output of, of one. 
So let's go and run this. OK, so once again, it's going to generate the harness. It's going to build it again. It's executed on the target and we can see it's green. It's basically this test has passed. So the code is doing what I'm expecting to do. And we should be able to now take a look at the coverage. And we've got a 100% statement and branch coverage. Great. So it looks like the code is doing what I wanted to do. Now let's try and find out, well, how much time is it taking to execute? So for that, I'm going to open a different sequence here. So I've got a sequence here where I'm basically going to execute the code. I'm going to run this 100 times. I'm specifying the same input, the same output, and I'm going to measure the execution time. If I was running this without anything else running, so I was run, I'm was i running this on, on Linux, so we might have interrupts firing, we may have other tasks running. And so if I was running this on a, a bare metal without anything else running, I'd expect to get exactly the same time each time. In this particular case, I'm expecting to get a, a distribution of the execution times. So once again, we're going to execute this on the target. This is going to take a little bit longer because it's basically executing 100 times and we're saving all the execution time times for each repetition. So I'm doing this without coverage. I'm not interested in the coverage. I just want to find out how much time is this function actually taking. OK, so that's now executed and let's take a look and see what happened. So I'm going to go and show maybe a, a timing diagram to start with. And there we can see very clearly the distribution. So I've specified that uh, this is the, the best case execution time I want. This is the worst case execution time. And in this particular case, we can see we've measured between these two times here. And we've got this sort of bell curve where most of the time it's taking around this length of time. But occasionally we're getting uh, something a bit faster and we're getting this tail here. So finally, what I might want to do is to view a, a report. And the report is showing me the same information, except I can see I've got I'm getting information about the the minimum execution time, maximum, as well as the mean execution time there. OK, so hopefully that's shown how we're able to measure worst case execution time. And if you'd like more information, then please don't hesitate to contact us at LDRA. Thank you.